Hello YouTube, this is Skip, coming to you live, straight out of Real Hot Six Aquatic Kennels. I'm outdoors, on my property, actually I'm in my uh, picnic area, where I want to share with you guys some of my reference material. Now this is a table outside my picnic area. And on this table, before you, I have PDF files that I printed off online. I have books. This is a book, Cichlids of North and Central America by Don Kokel, one of my reference guides. I have another PDF printed off uh, book. I have some photos, some old photos of my uh, mitre cichlids. That's one locking up with my uh, one of my pyros back in 97. Here's an old Polaroid picture of my Midas and my Managuensi locking up. Here's a drawing that I printed offline. And it illustrates a great illustration and picture and drawing of a Midas. I like this particular drawing because this particular drawing is going to be one of the centerpiece as far as this part two discussion of the Midas cichlid evolutionary history. So part two of this series, we're going to focus on the breed standard. But before I start with that, I would like to thank all you guys who went out and purchased, either through me or through Amazon, my book titled Skip's Guide to Keeping Real Hard Cichlids. I want to thank you guys. I want to show my appreciation. Because without you guys, this wouldn't have been possible. You guys have motivated me as well as my mentors. And Don Coker was one of them. And my book is right next to his. It looks small in comparison. <laughs> but you guys were the motivation that I needed to follow through and finish up having my book published in copyright and I want to thank you guys I also want to thank you guys because all proceeds every dime every penny every sale of this book goes towards maintaining my aquarium building and my fish and the hobby that I love so enough of that let's get into the topic at hand here we have, like I said, a few books, some PDF files that I printed off online. Uh, I also printed some documents from the University of Michigan discussing Lake Apoyo, Nicaragua, and the diversity within the Midas Cichlid Complex. Like I said, people, the Midas cichlid complex is one of the most diverse cichlids on the planet. It's definitely the most diverse cichlid in Central America. And one of the places that that holds true to more than any other place in Central America is this. I hope you guys can see I'm focusing in on it. Place right here. Where this arrow is pointing, Lake Apoyo. Now, the reason why I say that is because Lake Apoyo, I think I mentioned in the first video in part one, is the largest crater lake amongst four, 13 other crater lakes. Lake Apoyo is 23,000 years old. Here's a before picture of Lake Apoyo when it was first developing, and here's now. Now when we talk about Lake Apoyo, we probably have to go into a little bit of the history and development of that particular crater lake as well. So I want you guys to understand. Lake Apoyo was formed when the titanic plates under Central America collapsed against one another and created a volcano which shoots up magma that dries out that cools off when it hits the surface and 
over time, approximately 23,000 years, it became like a cesspool for bacteria, small organisms, fungi, and things of that nature. And in doing so, we have what you see right here before you. So you have to understand a little bit about the history of the environment that some of these subspecies of Midas evolved in. Look at this illustration of this Midas. Beautiful. Now, some of you guys may recall or may not recall a while back and even recently in the um, part one of this video series, I always mention that all these different Midas species are just that, Midas. They all came from Midas. They all derived from Midas. If there was no Midas in Central America or on the planet, period, these other species of Midas or subspecies would not exist period they came from Midas and you can't be more than what you came from you can adapt through adaptation you can mutate you can evolve but when you go back to that family tree that lineage it's going to revert back to this fish this fish this illustration of a Midas that one, my old Midas, here with my Trimax, it goes back to the Midas. All roads go back to the Midas. Like I said to you guys, there's nothing new in this hobby but the history you do not know. Now, before I discuss further the breed standards, I want to clear some things. Like I stated, In part one and in a video I made some time ago that was titled, I believe, uh, Can You Tell the Difference Between Old School Jeff Raps Trimax and the New School Pyro Trimax? And in that video I made, a, I made a comment. And I stated that Hogaboomeras and Amarellos and all those different subspecies were Midas. They were nothing more but just Midas. And when I made that comment, some people took it among themselves to tag that video and attach it to Monster Fish Keeper. And of course, the naysayers and the haters went to town on it. They thought it was quite hilarious and funny that I made that statement. They said that that's, making that statement, I lost credibility in the cichlid world because it wasn't true. Now, Let's fast forward to 2014. Here, I have some literature that I printed offline. And I also have it in some of these books as well. And one of the things that is mentioned in this literature. Let's, let's see if I can focus in on it. Let's see if we can read this. Lake Apoyo is, a popul is populated by several endemic fish species. These fish species have all derived from the Midas cichlid, Amphilopus centronella. Hmm. Are you guys understanding what this means? This means what I said was true. But you know, I know it's still part of some lazy. Oh, Skip, you just making this stuff or this this stuff you print on. You can go up and look all this. You can research all this information I'm telling you guys right now. Documentation beats conversation all day long. But here's the problem we have in this hobby. Sometimes you have people that are privy or privileged to information that other people aren't. And so the people who aren't, in, aren't uh, exposed to that type of information always doubt and always be naysayers. You ever notice how when you present some information that maybe someone else doesn't know, the first thing they say is, I never heard of it before, I never seen it before, 
uh, such and such never seen it or heard of it before so therefore it must not exist you ever notice that like I said people ignorance is not an excuse for debate those people are almost always are the naysayers that you hear from or comment on your videos because they don't do their research they don't do their due diligence I know and some of you guys know that just like these cichlids have evolved technology and information gathering and research has evolved as well over the years our ability to gather accurate factual data has increased throughout the years that's a part of our evolutionary process as people who like to learn or who like to do research so with that said let's take a look at this 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 picture right here this drawing this is a drawing of a Midas I know I mentioned to you guys on many different occasions that one way of knowing that you have a Midas and not a my devil or a labianum's red devil is this region the lips now that's not the only way to tell but that's one of the best way or that's the starting point right here if you notice these lips are round like a hippo almost like a bulldog and one of the things that I want to share with you guys that I discovered is that the mitre cichlid is built for power and impact meaning that they're natural glass bangers they're built for it. their cheese have their their, their uh, lips have an extra cushion and, gen and genetic spring in between the jaw area and the extension their heads and their skulls are extra thick actually the mitre cichlid out of all the cichlids have the thickest there's a mosquito skull region and I'm going to prove that to you guys I'm going to show you As a matter of fact let me see if I have that illustration it's in one of these one of these books But we'll get to it. Let me see. Okay, here we go right here. This is a drawing. This is an illustration of a Midas upper jaw area, lower jaw area. The, uh, the teeth. The eyes. The jawline. Look at all that muscle. Check it out, people. This is the inside. That's what I say. You can't just look at the surface when you're trying to identify a certain species of Midas. The, the Midas is so diverse and so complex that you have to do a little bit more than just look at the surface of the fish and the coloration and, and patterns. You have to look at, you have to look beneath the surface and check it out beneath the surface. This is why I say the Midas cichlid is built for glass banging. Unlike other cichlids, I, I have trimax cichlids that like to hit the glass a lot too, and, and they knock themselves out. But my mitre cichlids has never been knocked out. They never knock themselves out, and they hit the glass just as hard, if not harder, than my trimax and my dovis, because they're built for impact. Check it out. Look at the illustration. Solid, muscular fish. That's one of the of the breed standards like I said people I'm going to show you guys the fish facts throughout this video series I'm going to show you guys the fish facts now when we talk about Lady Adams on the other hand Lady Adams red devils Amphilopus Lady Adams they have evolved to where they have an adaptation because they like, they like to eat crustaceans and snails and have to get in between rocks and crevices. They like cave dwellers and ambush predators. In the shallow waters around caves and driftwood and things of that nature. And they like to grab snails and stuff. So they develop lips 
just like a nutcracker. If you look at these lips on this Amphilopus Lady Adams, and you grab a pair of nutcrackers out of your house, out the drawer in your kitchen, and put it next to these lips, it'd be perfectly aligned with a Lady Adams lips. Because that's what they do, they crack shells. And this is type of breed standards we're going to discuss in this video series. But I first wanted to show you guys some of my reference material so you can have an idea where I'm getting a lot of this information from and how this information that I have been collecting throughout the years have evolved from the, from the first day I started up until now. So when we talk about breed standards, people, what we learn? We learn that we just can't look at the surface. We got to look beneath the surface. We also have to learn what exactly is the biological definition of a species and in what order and class do we go by when we're talking about a species? What comes before species? Everything. Species is the last thing on a genetic order list. When you talk about biological classifications species is the last one and moving in reverse the species is the Midas cichlid or Centronella Midas Centronella and Midas like I said is one and the same the genus the genus is Amphilopus people Amphilopus is the genus it's the catch-all to all the species that's cousins or very similar to the Midas. Like Festes, the Labianums, Eurothalmus, Trimax. All those species are cousins to this genus, the Amphilopus. The family, on the other hand, is cichlids. Cichlids is the family, people. That's the classification for this particular fish cichlids so now that we have that understanding we can move on with the breed standards and classifications and we'll pick up on that in part two I mean part three of this series so now in closing I'm gonna leave you guys with this this story a short story I don't want to prolong this video, but a long time ago, back in the late 80s, early 90s, I, I, I guess between 87 and 94 is when I discovered that we had in the world dovies with deep bodies and knuckle humps as big as Midas. And when I went out into the the cichlid community to share this bit of information man I was laughed at I mean people was just people was just having a ball with that information now some of these guys are guys that you all know today and you all order from guys that you respect in this hobby I'm not gonna mention any names because that's not how I do business that's not how I am I'm in this hobby to lift people up and inspire people not to tear people down so I don't do the name thing. But I do want to share this story with you guys because it's relevant to what we're discussing. So I went into the community and was telling these guys about what I heard from a, a particular guy who's been in a hobby way longer than I have. And have been collecting fish long before even these guys were. He was one of the first people to start collecting fish in North America. Out of Florida. And he was telling me how when he went down to Central America. They were pulling dovies out the water with deep bodies and big humps. Humps. Knuckle humps as large as Midas. If not larger. And so I shared this with the guys in the community. And they laughed at me. They talked about me. They ridiculed me. They said that's impossible. Now back then. The Dovis wasn't classified in the Pyrochromus family. But we're going to say Pyrochromus family just for namesake. Because I don't want to confuse anyone. So they were telling me that the Pyrochromus family. 
did not have the genetic composition to develop knuckle humps. So basically what they were saying was the, the dovi didn't have the genetic coding to develop knuckle humps in deep bodies. Because they were so used to the collectors and the fish stores bringing in and the wholesalers bringing in dovis with a sleek body built more like chaos was without any humps or deep bodies. Uh, they weren't collecting those big body dovis that we see today. But now if you fast forward to 2014 and you watch the videos, there are videos that's downloaded on YouTube and streamed throughout the internet showing you dovis with deep bodies and knuckle humps. I even have a video that I posted some a couple of years ago or a year ago when I was at the National Zoo showing you a display of dovis with knuckle humps and deep bodies. Juan just posted a video on YouTube when he visited a local pet store here, Greenbelt Aquarium, where the owner, Richard, ordered and had delivered to his shop dovis with knuckle humps and deep bodies. So what does that tell you, people? That tell you this. Ignorance is not an excuse for debate. And I've always said that. You're always going to have naysayers who come out here and just because they never seen one before and their buddies never seen one before or who, whoever such and such never seen one before, it pretty much does not exist in their eyes. And that's just not true. You know how when you have a, you, you, you guys ever notice when you're confronted with someone, a hater, and you make a video or you on Facebook and they always seem to have this one excuse. They always seem to say this every single time when you present something that they don't know anything about. They always say, I never heard of it before. Such and such never heard of it before, so therefore it doesn't exist. But they never ever seem to bring forth documentation to prove their point. That's just their point. That's the only point they can make. Whereas when I present information to you guys, I'm always sharing with you guys documentation right before you. Beats conversation all day long. So, until next time, in part three, when we further discuss the breed standards and the different variations of this subspecies of Midas in this Midas complex, you know the saying.